the hell that I was in, I'd do anything to be better. I thought like a lunatic. You gotta just have like that little bit of hope that it will get better. You're gonna make it. This began my surrender. I am a witness of my own growth. It's a life beyond your wildest dreams, and I just have to say, it works if you work it. My story, that's what I share. You're listening to Far From Finished, a weekly podcast where we share new, real-life stories of hope and triumph, told by the people who live them. Today's story comes to us from... Hi, I'm Darlene, and uh, I work for Solutions Recovery at AAC in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, in 1988, I got married in San Francisco, and um, together, him and I had a big bouncing baby boy... Uh, in May of 1989. Um, my s- husband uh, was drinking, and uh, I had no clue that he was drinking because he was in a lot of pain. And, um, you know, he got hospitalized, and, uh, you know, um, he went into a coma. He had... Uh, kidney failure, liver failure, hepatitis, and double pneumonia when he went in. And um, September 13th of 1989, he went into the hospital. September 30th, he passed. Um, when I went and got his uh, his paperwork from the hospital, he was diagnosed with bone cancer, and I had no clue or understanding of what happened. Um he didn't feel the need to sit and have a conversation with me to let me know that he had bone cancer and he would have been paralyzed from his shoulders down. Um, shortly after my son um, wasn't um, functioning right, he wasn't able to hold my fingers like he used to and uh, I took him to the hospital St. Luke's Hospital in San Francisco, and um, he was diagnosed with cancer also, and uh, he died 17 days later after my husband did. So I put them both in a crypt together, um, and uh, when I did that, myself uh, didn't want to live anymore. I was 24, my husband was 28, my son was four and a half months old when he died, and uh, I thought my world had ended, so I took a bunch of pills and I went to sleep, and I braced myself in the bathroom against my bathroom door with my legs braced against the sink so nobody could open the door. Um, when the people in the house realized that I wasn't there, um, they found out I was in the bathroom. Um, they had no clue how to get me out. Um, I didn't know anything. I fell asleep. I didn't wake up. Uh, I went into a coma. I didn't wake up until January 18th of 1990. And, um, family was there. Um, friends were there. They told me that the fire department had to come because they would have broke both of my legs if they would have kicked the door in. And um, they had to cut the door in half and lift me out. And uh, that's what happened with that. And, um, you know, I stayed in the hospital in the psych ward for quite a long time. And uh, learning how to live without either one of them. And... uh, When I was released, the lawyers came to me and handed me a 13-page handwritten letter that my husband had wrote and um, explaining why he did what he did without letting me know what was going on with him and his medical issues. He couldn't see me at 24 years old, um, being that he would be paralyzed from his shoulders down. He couldn't see me at 24 uh, having to feed him, bathe him, clean him, wipe him, wash him, and do everything for him. But uh, my biggest deal was that he never gave me the opportunity to choose. 
he chose for himself. And um, it didn't give me the opportunity to save my son. So there was a lot of resentments. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of addiction. Um, for years, there was a lot of addiction. A lot of prison time. A lot of felonies. Just trying to kill myself also. And um, finally, looking at another 13 years in prison, I was sentenced to a treatment center here in Las Vegas called West Care. And um, I learned how to live differently. Um, that my way was the wrong way. And that um, it wasn't my fault. Um, in 2004 is when the grieving and the processing started. The mourning started because I didn't do any of that um, because all I wanted to do was die. Um, so my sobriety date is uh, February 13th of 2004. Um, you know, and uh, I got into a different relationship and um, he had three children. He had two stepchildren and he had his daughter and... Um, they were in my lives from the ages of three, four, and seven. And Chris was the oldest, and um, he was in his active addiction. After two and a half years, he went back out. And um, I turned around, and um, his, Chris's mother was an addict also. And, um, you know, she got sentenced to prison. And I love these kids like they were mine. And uh, I got an opportunity of a lifetime to be a mom again. And um, in 2011, in August, um, I got the guardianship of this boy. And um, we've been together ever since through thick and thin. No matter what, um, God has blessed me in so many different ways because I get to live a life beyond my wildest dreams and be a mom that couldn't have been for my son that died. So today I'm the best mom. Today I'm the best sister. Today I'm the best daughter um, to my family members that... Uh, lost me through the act of addiction for 28 years. Christopher and I has had a bump, a couple bumps in the road, but he's getting ready to walk cap and gown and graduate high school on June 12th. Uh, Christopher's gonna turn 18 uh, in August, and he's going off to college. Um, he's the best kid in the world. Uh, sometimes he doesn't even know it, but he's my hero. Because if it wasn't for me having to take care of him, I don't know where I'd be. So he keeps me sane. He keeps me strong. He keeps me wanting to push and be the best mom and best person I can be because of who his biological mom and dad are. So they gave birth to him, but I'm his mom. And uh, with this Mother's Day coming up, Just to be able to be a part of this kid's life right here has been a blessing for since 2011. And um, being able to be a part of his graduation and watching him grow up to this little boy, to this grown teenager, getting ready to be a grown man at 18 in August has been amazing. My name is Chris. I'm 17. I'm a senior at high school. Um... As my uh, teacher said, uh, my mom is an addict. I moved in in 2011. Before then, I think we had more than 10 evictions. I moved to more than 10 schools. Um, you know, I've seen it all.
But uh, my TT was always there for me. Uh, the nights when we had no food, like, you know, I could just call her up. And, like, you know, just she always, like, come bring me some food or just stay with her. Um, yeah, for the longest. Um, but 2011, when I moved in, you know, my whole life changed. Um, I never had consistency. Uh, but living with her taught me a lot. Um, you know, uh, I wasn't the best kid. I was, I guess you could say I was bad. <laughs> Um, you know, everything changed, seventh grade year, you know, grades sparked up, uh, yeah, grades started, you know, I just started meeting new people in my life, mentors, just experiencing so much as a young child, um, yeah, um, you know, never used that, when I moved in, uh, I never used any of that as an excuse, I used that as, you know, power to, but stronger, so I know that uh, I won't be like that when I get older. You know, uh, so, you know, turn that negative into a positive. It could be worse. You know, I was blessed enough to have someone that cares about me, and uh, you know, I just thank God for it. Uh, I know I could have, you know. Easily moved in with like a blood family relative in, in Sacramento, you know. But I think I I did it. I probably would have had everything handed to me. Um, but you know, living with her, I I, I, I learned how to be grateful for, for everything. Um, still, I know I can have anything I want, but it's the point where I work for it. You know, it teaches me a lot of responsibilities. Thanks. You know. I'm blessed for everything, you know, six years later, seven years later, here I am, you know, you know, I'm always the, the happy kid, the <laughs> right? laughing, and, you know, cool kid, you know, but I hide a lot of my, my struggles, but, you know, I, I like to, because, you know, that's not who I am, you know, it's a part of me, but that's not who I am. It just makes me stronger as of today. You know, now I have over 12 college acceptances. Um, you know, I, I could, I'd rather, now I'm picking what school to pick over, um, you know, what what gang to join or I could pick, you know, what school to go to then, uh, what friend to hang around with. Um, you know, I'd rather hang around with my friends that, you know, also have cause acceptances and I'd rather talk about why we should go to this school than to talk about why we should fight this person um, you know positive conversations instead of negative conversations yeah. um, you know I'm just you know I'm blessed to be able to do a lot of things I could do um, you know, I've been traveling a lot as a young kid I mean I'm just blessed and fortunate to have everything I have and you know now it's my turn as I uh, get older to return everything she's done for me and take care of her. Aww. <laughs> you know, I got, you know, as motivation, I have a good 12 years to, you know, get my career ready so I could just be able to take care of her and get her everything she wanted, just like she got everything I wanted, you know. So it's motivation. I can't wait, you know. Just blessed to have her. She's a great mom. Um, you know, you like you know every every parent son have their bumps in a row, but you know it makes it stronger. Uh, you know, but I'm just grateful. Um, I'm happy. I think Christopher pretty much touched base on a lot of the different things. Um, when he finally came to me permanently, um, he was in the he was in the seventh grade, and he was in the you know. Uh, just to show you, you know, him growing up with his mother and the act of addiction and the things that he went through as a young little boy, you know, and uh, all the fighting that he was doing in school and, you know, they were calling me, he was calling me, you know, he got suspended from school over and over and over again and uh, fighting, fighting, fighting and, you know, taking food from the schools that he didn't share about to say he could feed his sisters. 
because he had to be the big brother, father type of role because he played this role at seven to take care of his two sisters that are three and four at the time. You know, um, when Christopher came to me, he was in the seventh grade permanent. and uh, permanent. When he came to me permanently, he was in the seventh grade and he was in a reading level of uh, fourth grade. Um, he was in a math level of fourth grade. And uh, we tackled that together. It wasn't easy, you know, um, to get him built up and build that consistency and that structure for him because he was just so used to living from place to place to place, from hotel to hotel to hotel. And, you know, um, learning how to do chores was a big one for him. <laughs> I think it still is as far as his room. He's getting better. Um, you know, so we put him into tutoring and stuff like that. And for this kid to be able to have 12 acceptances to different colleges, man, to come from where he came from, to be who he is today. And he's never, never, never had to see me um, in an active addiction. And, uh, you know, he goes to the meetings with me. He goes to all my birthdays every every year celebration. Um, he knows the serenity prayer frontwards and backwards. Um, people that are in his life, and my family is his family. He might not be my bloodline, you know, but he is my son. And um, my family loves him for who he is. They never judged him for anything. They've been his mentors. Um, they've taught him how to be the boy, from this little boy to this man that he's growing up to be right now. You know, and, uh, he's got a lot of good people in his life. And he's never, never um, ever had to struggle for anything, you know, wondering where the next meal is coming from or anything like that since he's been with me. You know, and uh, he has a good life, you know, and uh, I'm very excited about Christopher's future, you know, and uh, and I get to be a part of that, you know, and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blessing, you know. Uh, I don't think that man upstairs, I don't think that man that I call God made a mistake when he sent this boy to me, you know, and um, it's just a good deal. It's just a good deal.